It's Bay Radio International. I'm Cal Sutherland. Romy's here for our weekly update or bi-weekly feature. Hiya. Hi. Uh, we uh, look at all aspects of the property market here in Spain. Along with our partners at Villa Lux, we have all the latest news on selling, buying, owning and renting property here in Spain. And if you're thinking about moving or have just moved or even lived here for longer, our regular updates are for you. Now and again, of course, we feature regular guests. And with us this week is Callum from Coastal Curries. How's it going, Callum? Good, mate. How are you? Not too bad. Been a while since you were here. Uh, for those who don't know, could you just remind us of what it is exactly that you do? Yep, so we do um, removals between the UK and Spain. Um, we need to do sort of regular trips twice a month. Um, depends on workload, but but yeah, we, um, that's what we, we, we aim to do. Um, also, part loads as well. Um, yeah, just sort of depends on on the uh, the client's requirements. Since Brexit, of course, dare we mention the B word, uh, <laughs> moving to and from the UK, of course, uh, has become much more complicated. Now, I understand your transport manager, Kate, has been busy updating her qualifications to make sure that you can help customers comply with the regulations. Yeah, of course. Um, it, 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 Doing the uh, the man and van business um, before Brexit was uh, was very easy. Um, after Brexit, not so much. Uh, we fell into a bit of a grey area where it took us a while to um, to uh, understand where we needed to be on the uh, on the transport sector. Um, and so regular uh, man and van operators from the UK um, they now require a O, li- o license. That's an operator's, operator's license. Operator's license. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, have to have the regular insurance. Um, and so, yeah, uh, Kate has been very busy. Uh, um, not very, not very straightforward. Those qualifications either are quite difficult, aren't no, they? No, no, no. She you know, all uh, aspects. The, the, honestly, the sheer volume of what was involved with gaining the transport manager's qualification was immense. Yeah, well done, um, Kate. So Kate did absolutely brilliant to uh, to get her qualification. And so, between the pair of us, yes, we're. Um, Onwards and upwards now. We, and we, uh, it's all about expansion, isn't it? Because you've uh, added uh, qualified HGV drivers to be able to handle bigger loads now. Yes, yes, yeah. We've um, we've got our Marco. He's uh, he's he's doing the sort of you know regular trips. He's never also. here. <laughs> he's always on the road. <laughs> he's always on the road. Yeah, we do post regular updates on our Facebook page where the vehicles are, and then we've also got Sean with um, HGV qualification and experience. He's quite famous, isn't he? Really, he is. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He's, he's known for uh, for gracing a motorcycle circuit or two oh, or yes. three around oh, Europe. yes, yes. A man of many talents. He is, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. what, what size of removals do you do, then? We're just talking about different types of vehicles. How, what does that sort of equate to, sort of house-wise, apartment-wise? Um, well, uh, the, the vehicles that we have, we have a Mercedes Sprinter, long wheelbase, and we have a Renault Luton um, box van. Um, so, in terms of a, a full house move, I would say both vehicles can handle that um that so we're talking about average uk house size perhaps yeah so like the three to five bedroomed houses Mm -hmm. um if you just wanted like a one or two bedroom apartment either van would probably be suitable for that um for the bigger jobs you'd probably need both vans but however i do you know when a client first gets in touch with me say right give me a breakdown of what you've got because you know, so the not, option is there for HGV, so you can do that if yes. uh, somebody requires yeah. much more space. Yes. I mean, um, my sort of plan is uh, hopefully within the next month I'll be going to do uh, my own HGV qualification. Um, so, yeah, we'll definitely in the pipeline. Yeah, and I want, when it comes to areas, what, what areas do you serve? Like how far should uh, we... Currently, we're just doing the UK. However, from um, September, we will be open to inquiries from mainland Europe, hmm. um, such as Holland, Belgium. We noticed a lot of... Um, a lot of Dutch and, <laughs> uh, and Belgians here. So um, in line with our licence, we... Even though we're in UK registered vehicles, we are legal to do these internal runs. Um, so, so yeah, from September, we're we're open to uh, to mainland Europe. Oh, that's really good because I mean, there's so many people that you don't even always need to be moving, but they could just be stuff that people want to bring yes. from one place to the other. People that own a second home here. So, I think mm. that's really good to have more yeah. providers for that locally here in Javier. I mean, the the UK work is still there. The, there are still people moving out to Spain. However, the the red tape and the um, um, mm. what you need to move out now you need a little more money you need visas etc etc yeah. UK work is still there but not as much so we're talking about it with Cal um, you could still run uh, back to the UK with clients that want to move back mm. and potentially come out of the UK empty and yeah. straight into 
Susan Tarland, um, to, to help clients there. Yeah, because, I mean, we, we had a conversation with a seller once from the UK as well, and, and they moved here maybe 10 years ago, I think it was. They brought a lot of stuff from <clears throat> from the UK to Spain. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I keep having this thing. I'm like, I'll turn, turn the air con up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, so, it's, so yeah, they, they brought all the stuff from the UK to Spain, no problem at all. And mm. right now they wanted to bring it back to the UK. Yeah. And all of a sudden it just was, yeah. it was so much more. So actually, I was thinking about that. So bringing stuff from Britain, yep. we understand it is difficult now because we read about it all the time. There's still mm-hmm. lots of issues for people. Uh, but going back, you would have thought might be more straightforward. But it, it is, does it it is involve a lot of paperwork as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, I mean going, if you wanted to move back to the UK, it's a simple online application called a transfer of residence. Um, if you're a Spanish resident and you've decided to move back to the UK permanently, you can log on to the HMRC website, search transfer of residence, once it's accepted, um, it spits out a, a unique reference number, um, which is that what we have to quote to customs when we're moving items mm-hmm. back. And that's basically saying there's no taxes or anything applicable on this because it's someone moving their main residence mm-hmm. from Spain back to the UK. And once that TOR is approved, you have one year. Um, to move anything back. Oh, so you can thing. book it ahead of time yes. quite, quite yeah. easily. And, and, of course, I know that you offer the service to help people with all of the paperwork either yeah. way, but they're going there or coming back because yeah. it can be a bit of a minefield. Yeah. I think I that's mean, really good. Well. So sorry. To, no, no, but, but it, just because of you, what you were just saying, I think that's so useful because I don't think that there, there's that many people that actually know about all these steps mm-hmm. involved and they might just, you know, have a van here themselves, load it up with stuff, get to customs, and there it's like, what have you got with you? <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. I think that's really good about you using a company like yours as well. Yeah, I mean, I've built up plenty of knowledge with this uh, since Brexit and since taking over the business. And um, I'm just more so happy to advise um, yeah. you know, people if they phone me up and want advice. I say, right, well, tell me exactly your situation um, and I'll see what, see what we can do. So is it straightforward moving around mainland Europe? I would imagine so then. EU countries, certainly. Yes, yes, because you, well, for starters, you don't need the customs paperwork. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there, there, there is that. It's easy enough to move from point A to point B. Um, in, like I said earlier, in line with our licence, we are allowed to do these these jobs. Um, so we wouldn't need any customs paperwork. If we did get stopped by any law enforcement, um, we, would, we would have documents um, for, you know, for the clients that want to move internally within, within Europe. Okay. What about insuring your your stuff? Do you need to get take your your own insurance if you're moving your your things, or does it, are you covered for that? We we have goods in transit insurance. Um, we 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 have a, a value per vehicle of up to ten thousand pounds, which moving people secondhand it's not very often that someone goes over that that sort of well we just had uh, my old piano there from diana <laughs> ross which i know i know they really just conjures up ideas of the old pg tips adverts <laughs> yeah. the, you know but i'm not saying that you know you're a monkey or anything but you know moving pianos around that that's that you know there are sometimes people might have some quite high value items so i'd imagine if it is a high value item then perhaps there might be some personal insurance to be involved yes there. i would i would if, if high value item and it exceeds our goods in transit insurance i would advise to take out a separate sort of policy mm-hmm. but we do both fans are fully insured for goods in transit for for moving internally within the eu and in the uk and i think the fact that you do part loads is quite good as Remy was mentioning uh, earlier people do, sometimes they just want to bring their patio furniture yeah. down from uh, you know from from the netherlands or something like that yeah. so yeah. yeah 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 and that's something that we can definitely look forward to doing um let's say from september um we we have like a bit of a, a, an august Shut down the Well, yes, this is, this is Spain. I know you've got, <laughs> you, you've, you've got hubs in Nottingham and uh, in Spain, but you know, we follow the Spain rule in, in, yeah, in, in the Spain August. Rule. It's, it's too hot. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Who wants to be moving stuff around in August, for no. goodness but sake? But it gives us time to. There's some uh, paperwork catch up as well, though, isn't it? Yeah, time. Yeah. No, it is. It gives us time to sit down, you know, reassess where we're at and, you know, look at anything that we need to do um, and then sort of fire back up in September, ready to go. There was something Remy mentioned uh, before we came on air, and that, and that was about storage. You you have for quite often when people are yeah. buying uh, or renting property here, the, the, they find they have a storage issue. <clears throat> yeah, or sometimes as well when people are selling their property, um, they are still looking for a new property. They can't find it on time. They decide to rent something temporarily. They need a storage facility to put their stuff, their belongings in until they find their next house. So it's definitely, there's, there's a lot of demand. And it can be quite difficult like to that. find places here, yeah? yeah especially like 
you know, good places. Uh, th- I think that's always the same, the same thing here. Right, yeah. Man with yeah. a shed, perhaps not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't want humidity. You don't hum- want all these humidity things, controlled so. warehouse, yes, more likely. Yes. I see. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of there's yeah there's a lot of demand. So like I think that's an excellent service the, to the, offer. There is a lot of demand around Javier for storage. Um, we've looked into this, and um, hopefully by October December time we'll be in a position to um, to offer our own storage. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's in the pipeline. Um, it's one of the things that we're going to be sitting down in August and sort of you know mm-hmm. looking at and, and what we. I know because in the meantime you have actually had a couple of contacts where you've been able to help people out, but um, yeah, yeah, it, no, having no, everything we, all under one roof has got to be the way forward. Yeah, but, no, I mean, I mean, up till now I've been um, you know sending people in the the uh, direction of uh, the secure storage, our good friends, and also store with us um, a new facility opened up in Ondara. Mm-hmm. Um, Emma's in charge there. So, um, so yeah, you know, I always sort of recommend the, the various stories that are available around Javier. Mm. But hopefully we're going to have... Well, it's all know, part of your future plans. Um, so expansion, not just more staff and uh, the ability to run HGV vehicles, but also uh, branching out into the storage Definitely. We're, area. we're at the point now where we're looking to invest more in our vehicles, more in, you know, on what facilities we can offer. So, um, so yeah. All is good. Uh, I like the way you keep saying how busy you're going to be in August. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be watching to make sure that you really are. Uh, one thing I do like about uh, about your company uh, is that uh, Coastal Couriers uh, have their Facebook page where you always know where everything is. Uh, I love the fact that you can always tell us where Marco is or where you are or you know or any of the guys uh, are driving, whether he's just got up and had bacon and eggs and gone on his way. Well, it's, it's great. No, no, it's, it is. I... I I love keeping people updated on social media. Um, you know, it might not, uh, you know, our clients might not follow these updates on on, on Facebook, but others might. Um, you know, just to see where we are in the world, what we're doing. Um, you know, we we go to some very exotic places like Ab- Aberdeen. That's a long trip. That's a long trip. Isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, sometimes it's great to keep people updated. You know where you are. Of course, so. you have the, the, in in the past. Um, the company have done runs down to southern Spain and the like as well. I mean, you do do local, don't you? You move even if people want to move, say within Happier or just to the next town. Yeah, no, no, we 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 do offer that definitely. Um, it, it it just all depends on on where the vans are um, within people's. Uh, requested sort of moving dates internally but mm-hmm. we'll always aim to do the best that we can to help. And those trip updates whenever there are trips that's always on the top of the Facebook page as well isn't it so yes. that people yep. know wh- when there are possible trips available but they can book ahead and Yeah um, no I try to keep the schedule updated um you know so I try to plan dates at least 3 months in advance um so people if they wanted to go on our page and look at what trips we're doing when see if it fit in with their schedule they could go on and you know have a look and and then get in touch. So that's facebook.com and then slash Coastal Couriers Javier. Uh, Coastal Couriers Javier.com for the website. And uh, your uh, your current uh, base is on uh, Carabinita Chell, uh, isn't it, in Javier? Yes, uh, correct. Okay. And uh, contact numbers. You've got a UK and uh, a Spanish yep. number, yeah? Yep, correct. And uh, WhatsApp on both. Okay, so the uh, Spanish number at seven two 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 one two four four eight. That's seven two 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 one two four four eight. Or the UK number zero zero four four seven eight zero nine. 523340. That's 7809 Put the details up on our Facebook page with a link to the Coastal Couriers page uh, for you shortly. And of course, uh, by magic, Moody will have the pictures from what's just happened uh, appear uh, very soon on uh, our uh, usual uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook pages as well. Uh, very good to see you again, mate. Thank Best you. of luck. Enjoy the uh, short uh, break in August. And, uh, Thank we, you very much. We look forward. Busy break. It's, been a, it's been a busy couple of years. Yeah, since you last came in. No, yeah, it has, it has, and all we've worked on so far is just getting bigger and better, and that's what we still aim to try and do. We're getting bigger and better. All right, that's you can great. find out details about uh, Villa Lux and the properties uh, that uh, Romy and Max have as well. You can call them, 965-794-059, and uh, join us here on Bay Radio International a couple of times a month to stay abreast of all the latest developments on living here and owning or renting a property in Spain. Of course, you can find us on our Bay Radio and Villa Lux YouTube channels and on our websites and social media. And if you have any questions about anything you've heard today or anything else, then you can always contact us via WhatsApp, 684. 684- Four, four double five eight double four or email studio at bayradio.fm we'll bring you the answers in future programmes well Romy certainly will <laughs> uh, good to see you Callum thank best you of luck much. with thank the business you <laughs> see you again in a couple of weeks Romy thanks a lot